Oh, uh, yeah, because that's okay. You know, we all love it. So hopefully today, we get something out. We get a little something. Some way to explain something better. Some way to do something better. We learn all the time. So our first speaker today, uh, actually, I twisted his arm. Uh, when I got the job here in March, uh, when I started, the first thing I wanted to do was change our strength and conditioning program. I wanted our strength and conditioning program to go along with the same philosophy that I would have. And so we interviewed, and then I found a guy, Gene, at St. Mary's. So actually, I convinced our athletic director, Ted Leland, to get the car and go meet him. After about eight different conversations and a whole bunch of money, we were able to get Gene here. He knows that that's true. But, uh, but uh, so he was at St. Mary's College for 10 years. We got him here, and you're starting to see a total change in our guys and how they operate and how they work. And the higher levels you go, So, 
if you are going to run drills, they should be drills that help you improve your stopping and starting. Agility drills, quick sprints, things of that nature. Okay. Conditioning effect. <clears throat> you pull out most uh, exercise physiology books, you'll, you'll find that muscular endurance is generally considered to be somewhere between 40% to 55% of your one rep max. And this is funny because this is sort of a, a simple math problem that I tell people when they ask about conditioning. I say, well, you get stronger. And they look at me funny, but if I, if my max is 100, and, and we use endurance, muscular endurance, as a factor of 50%, which is what the books say it is, well, if I get stronger by 10%, so my new theoretical 100% is 110, well, that makes my old 50% now 55%. And that's now my conditioning metric. So I've gone from 50 to 55 without ever training conditioning or endurance. Does that sort of make sense? So getting stronger, you being able to propel your body weight over the court, if, if you can do that quicker, that makes you have better endurance. Okay? The stronger you are, the more likely you are to have endurance. And, and this is a, a hard one to, to understand at first, but trust me, this is exactly what happens. So I always say a 10% yield, or a 10% increase in strength will yield a 5% increase in endurance or conditioning effect without even doing any of that. So it's really important to get your team stronger. So how are we going to do this, these conditioning drills? Well, for, depending on your team size, I recommend setting up circuits anywhere between four and six drills on the court whenever your conditioning session is. And I would say for this, what we're talking about here is probably going to be post practice. Okay? So if you have, let's just say we have a, a team of 15, and we could set up five or six drills. And what we're looking at is to break your team, or your groups off into one to two or one to three work to rest ratio. Uh, what that is, is that's the, the ratio of work that you want to do with your team that's going to mimic um, both strength and endurance capabilities while you're training. So if I have our team and we have 15, I'm going to break them up into groups of three. Two guys will go, or I'm sorry, one guy will go, two guys will be resting. And that's typically what the work to rest ratio is in basketball. If you were to break down the film, guys are very rarely continu continuously moving, okay? But it's about somewhere between one to two and a one to three work to rest ratio. So if we set up drills that have that ratio, we're gonna be conditioning our team exactly the way we want them to be playing. So you can work lower body strength training into these drills. And I, I'm very fond of single leg squatting. It doesn't take a lot of weight or a lot of uh, implements to attain. So single leg squats, split squats, utilize a medicine ball, dumbbells, whatever you have. It doesn't need to be a lot of weight. It just needs to be a little bit that will challenge you or make these a little bit more challenging as you go through the year. You can obviously start out with body weight. If you haven't done any of this stuff in the past, you can start out with body weight and still get a pretty good training effect out of this. Another thing to consider is to work mobility and flexibility <coughs> into your conditioning sessions. As I said before, that this rapid, eccentric component of basketball lends itself to overuse injury. And the more you can help to eliminate that, the better for your team. So an easy way to do that is in your conditioning session, in your, in your rest intervals, have a, have a group where you're doing 
some kind of a mobility drill, whether it's a stretch or we do a lot of foam rolling here. Do something that's going to promote recovery and mobility. Okay? So, what I want to do now is go over some of these exercises that we're talking about that you can very easily put into a circuit, 20 or 30 minute circuit in practice. And I'm going to use two of our players, uh, Raj and Aaron here. Okay. First thing I'm going to go over is lower body exercise that you can use with a medicine ball. A lot of places you should be able to find a medicine ball. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, a medicine ball on, on the lower body exercise, like a squat or things like that. You can use a dumbbell. It can be almost any sort of weight. Okay? But the reason why I say that a medicine ball is a good implement to use is because you can throw it. You can do a number of different things, and we'll go over those drills here in a second. So, medicine ball squat. Uh, let's see. I always use full range of motion in our exercises, okay? And the reason why is, again, I don't want to keep repeating that, that partial range of motion of running and jumping, which is basketball. So we want to work with concentric, which is going to be all the way down and coming all the way up. And <clears throat> this is just an example of a standard squat, a medicine ball squat. You can take a medicine ball squat and do what's called a, a thruster or a wall ball. You can go right up here on the floor. You want to do a throw, a squat, so a throw up on the back, back. Yeah. So here's an example of a wall ball throw where you're just going to squat all the way down, come up, jump, and throw. And okay, it's another example of something you can do for the lower body. It's going to help strengthen the legs and have an explosive component. Next, we'll go over split squat. I, why don't you turn from the side so I can see you. I'm really fond of this exercise, especially for basketball. <clears throat> what we're going to do is split our stance you know, about you know, two feet apart. And on the front foot, what we're trying to do here is squat down on the front leg and make sure your weight's on the back half of your foot. Okay? You're going to come down. Let's just hold it right here by your chest. Just come down, squat down. You want to try and get your hamstring to touch your calf. Come straight up. And you can repeat these. In terms of reps, you can use, you know, 20 reps. You can use time. It, it, it kind of doesn't matter. You, you just, you have a circuit to play around with here. And you've got a grouping of guys. So normally I would say try and go anywhere between 20 and 30 seconds per athlete and then rotate. In, in, in that time, on a single leg exercise, you're probably looking at, I'd say, anywhere between 15 and 20 reps. Uh, you, can, you can take that split squat where both feet are on the ground and make that a little tougher. chair or bench and you're going to do the same thing you're going to come down this time you're going to try and touch that opposite leg down the floor and come up good for your balance makes this one a little tougher it also helps promote your mobility because you're now trying to drive that opposite knee down to the floor which is going to really open up the hip flexors which tend to lock up in basketball Also do a single leg squat. Um, don't really have a good. Normally I like to uh, set up a, a box of anywhere between 24 inches, 26 inches, and we'll just squat down where our butt will barely touch whatever that marker is and come straight up. Uh, it's very good for a squat exercise on the court. 
actually, what you could do is probably put the methyl, you know, on, on one of those uh, chairs. <coughs> this will give you an idea of the single leg squat. All you're going to do is put one leg forward, try and keep your torso as vertical as possible, and push that knee forward. And this is going to strengthen that those muscles right in front of the knee, which are critical of keeping your knee health during the season. Those are all lower body drills that I really like. You can also work throws into these circuits as well with the med ball. Uh, what we're going to do here are some partner throws. The first one we're going to go over is a sit-up throw. Ross, you want to go ahead? Who wants to go down? Ross, go ahead on, on your back. This is just basically a, a sit-up, and then he's going to catch it, come down, and come up and explosively throw the ball back to the partner. Just like so. This is a way to build core strength and start to build in an explosive component to your conditioning. On the reps, anywhere between 6, six and 10 reps is sufficient. You want to try and train speed more than burning out your on that one. We can do other core exercises on these uh, conditioning days, but with the ball we're going to do that more explosively. We can also do a seated lateral toss. We're going to have a partner is going to be standing behind your shoulder here. And the reason why is we're trying to get a full rotation out of this throw. He's going to throw the ball as hard as he can. Back to the partner. And repeat that on both sides. Again, good core exercise. It starts to incorporate some of that uh, explosive component <clears throat> into your condition. The next two are going to be standing drills. We're going to do a standing chest pass. You want to get about, uh, let's say, 10 feet apart. Start there. Bend your legs, push as quick as you can back to your partner. Try to work your lower body into this. Don't just turn it into an arm exercise. Bend the knees and really push from the legs. Okay? You can also do, from that same distance, a standing overhead throw. Same, same deal with the lower body. Bend and try and initiate the action with your lower body. Throw back to your partner as quick as you can. On these standing drills, one, another thing that I like about this is that it, forces you to prepare sort of like shock training. You have to catch the ball, it's being accelerated, it's being thrown at you. So that's another good component with the medicine ball throws on this. You can also do throws where you start to step and really push the ball and drive it out for distance. You know, you can have, take a pass, pass it to your partner, Take a step back, have him pass it to you, keep st taking steps back and really try and make that distance increase throw to throw. Okay, the last thing I want to go over are these uh, slide drills. We have these, these uh, foot pads, but you don't necessarily need these. You can just put these over your feet. Uh, on the court, you probably just use a towel. Uh, you can use anything that's going to slide on the court. These are really good exercises. Uh, here, why don't you show them how to do the, uh, the first lunge first. Okay. This first one is sort of a variation of a single leg squat. It's going to be a reverse lunge. Uh, you're going to drive that front leg, uh, I'm sorry, the back leg back on that whatever mat you're using to slide. And then you're going to come back forward. Notice how it slides on the, on the floor. You can make this tougher. Use medicine ball, add a little bit of weight. Try and drop that back leg down the floor. It's an example of a single leg reverse lunge. You can also do, why don't you turn to the side. You can also do sort of a variation Slide the right leg out like a side, side squat. This is a sort of a side squat variation. 
you try to push push the the leg that's not on the slider down into sort of a single leg squat position and just gradually reach out with that right side. This is a mo good mobility drill, it opens up the groin. You don't want to go, you don't want to go too fast on this because you could you could get injured, especially with an athlete that's sort of on the tight side of the groin. But it, this is a good drill for a single leg exercise. <clears throat> the last two are pretty challenging. Leg curl. I want you to show them how to do the leg curl on the side. So what you're going to do, you're going to put your feet on that sliding device. Start out with your butt off the floor. You notice the butt's off the floor. And then you're going to curl your heels into your butt. Push back. You notice he's struggling. It's a really hard exercise on the hamstrings. It's very good exercise. Again, anywhere between 10 and, and uh, 20 reps. Or you can just go for time on all these exercises. Last, roll out. You're going to use uh, kind of like how we do with the wheel, except you're going to use these. Uh, on my head. Yeah. The last one is a variation of an ab wheel or ab rollout. We're just going to use a slider device. You're going to come out, pull yourself back in. Why don't you go with uh, knees on the floor? We don't have a, a pad here, but start out with your knees on the floor. Reach out as far as you can. Pull back into that starting position. It's a great ab exercise. It's also good for your shoulder stability. So these are these are some examples that you can do on the court with, that don't cost very much and will give you a lot of resistance and an option to do conditioning instead of just running on the court. Lastly, I want to go over a what, what, what you can do with a roller, sort of work in your recovery on, your, on these days. There, there's really only a few main areas you need to work on. The calves, let's go ahead and um, start. We'll just go like three rolls on each. We start out with the calves. We're going to cross one leg over the other. We're going to roll basically basic calf to the knee a few times on each side, switch sides. And then after the, the calf, we're going to flip over to the inner quad. This is the VMO. This is an area that gets tight, oftentimes in basketball. This is going to roll out to the side. If you want to apply some more pressure, push down on your leg on the roller. From there, we're going to flip over onto the outside. We're going to work the outer quad right above the knee. Again, just a few rotations back and forth. And then lastly, we're going to work from the hip sort of to the mid quad. That's the IT band area. These are all the areas that seem to be overused spots in basketball. So the more you can do to loosen these, this tissue up, the better for your athlete. They're not going to be as prone to any injuries. OK, so th these are just examples of drills you can do. I put down like an example circuit here. You can pick any agility drill that you want. We used to do a lot of lane agility work at St. Mary's, and I would just literally make up directions to go. You know, go baseline, sprint to the free throw, slide over, come back, back pedal, diagonal sprint. I mean, we would just make up any direction possible. So pick, pick a drill, pick a running drill, <coughs> and then med ball squats. So uh, we, we showed you how to do the med ball squats. That would be in another drill. You would, you would set that up and have a group of three doing squats. In the next drill, you'd have a, another group doing a slider leg curl, okay? Med ball seated lateral pass, a 20 yard sprint. We used to go baseline to free throw. And then the roller circuit, what we just showed you here, okay? And that would be an example of a day where it could be about 20 minutes 
20 to 30 minutes, you need to get a lot of conditioning and strength training done instead of just jogging up and down on the court. Okay? Any questions? as little or as, as much as you want, but I would say at least 15 minutes. Something what I described here after. We have almost all of our athletes in a great training class during the day. Would it have the same benefit doing your work study attached to your practice? Or is it attached to your practice? This doesn't necessarily take away from what you do in the weight room. This is just separate. If you're trying to do you know, preseason conditioning, this is just some, giving you something that's a variation from low intensity running. Yeah, this is this wouldn't be something to necessarily replace. It's a good question. It, it probably depends um, you know, what part of the season and travel. I, I'd say if you can get at least two sessions in, that would be good. If you can only get one then this becomes uh, a very realistic thing to try and get in at least another couple times a week. Yeah, frequently. Yeah, you know, it, it just depends on travel schedule. I'd say the goal would always be twice a week. There's going to be weeks where we might get three times a week and weeks where we only get once. You know, so if you're if you're not doing a lot of traveling in your home, you probably get in the weight room a little bit more. And those sessions don't have to be an hour long. You know, we're probably looking at more like a half hour to 40 minutes at that point. We're probably spending more time on the rollers trying to recover and keep our team healthy rather than just killing them in the weight room. But we are we are going to keep our strength. Would this be advantageous after a game, the post game? Yes. Well, you mean immediately after, or like day after? Immediately. Uh, I guess you could. But I, I, I'd probably I would probably just stick to like rollers and and maybe mobility drills and the same concept. You know, setting up areas around the gym. Maybe not necessarily trying to hammer them on strength training and conditioning effect. Yeah, so I guess yes, you could do it. Sure. Yeah, I, I didn't I didn't put that in here because this could have this two pages could have turned into twenty. But that just gives you an idea, it could be anything. Yeah. And then what you can, you can do is, is have like maybe five that you like to repeat and then time them or, you know, challenge them and say, hey, we want you to get 20 reps today on this exercise. Sure, yeah. pipe, which is harder, and it, it hurts more if your uh, tissue's not very good. These soft ones are good initially, and then after maybe a couple weeks, you need something harder to, to break up that uh, fascia of the muscle. So we actually, you know, we don't use these much. I brought them, this is probably good on the floor though, if you're, if you're worried about scratching the floor, the foam won't do anything. PVC pipe, if you've got a jagged edge, okay. But the PVC pipe is better. And it's cheap, like five bucks for 18 inches.
depends on the severity. You know, I would probably, I would, I would tend to stick to rolling the, t the tissue to try and create some sort of uh, recovery. Yeah, I wouldn't, and, and you know, sometimes on those little injuries, you have to go by the player's feel. You don't want to do something that hurts. But most of the time, rolling and mobility and stretching, that, that'll help speed that recovery. Very, uh, we have to pick things that give us a high bang. 